Hi, I'm Menofitsky and I'm making an exhibition about Japanese lacquer with my colleague Jan Dees for the Rijksmuseum and he's also making it for the Lacquer Museum in Münster and it's all for next summer but I thought I might give you a little preview of what is going to be there. For instance, let's look at a small lacquer dish. You start out with the wood and put lots and lots of layers of lacquer on top to form the ground layers. Clay mixed in with lacquer, fabric to make a sturdy nice object and on top of that comes the black lacquer and onto several layers of black lacquer you put the drawing and when the lacquer is still wet you sprinkle gold and that's how you form the picture and many many layers which are polished in between until you see the finished product. Japanese art is all about seasons we all know spring cherry blossoms right and um, what not many people know is that it's much more specific. It's not just spring, it's very early spring or a period of two weeks just before summer. And um, in many cases it's, it's, it's even more specific than that. It's not so much the season or which flowers bloom in a particular time of year, but it's the feeling of a particular scene in nature. So. When you just rained, for instance, you come outside and you smell the earth and it's kind of fresh, it's night, the sky has cleared up, you can feel that and, and it's that feeling that Japanese art wants to capture. When you buy a Japanese lacquer box, it comes with its own outer wooden box um, to protect it. Um, and that's relevant in the country of earthquakes, of course. And here you can see one, and you can see that it has a paper cover, um, and that's to protect the inscription on the box itself, the wooden box. And in that box we find a lacquer writing box, and um, it's a very, very special one, and that's the one I want to talk to you about. And here it is. It's a rectangular lacquer box decorated with a figure on top. It's about 30 centimeters in size. And when you open it up you can see on the left hand side an inkstone and above that a water dropper. And with the water dropper you sprinkle a little bit of water onto the inkstone and then you have your cake of ink, black ink, that you rub on the inkstone and with the water you slowly rub and rub and make ink that accumulates in the lower section of the inkstone. Now you can dip the tip of your brush into the ink and you're ready to write. It is autumn, you can see the maple leaves falling and the man sitting on the ground with his bare feet, rather disheveled, worn out clothes, is playing a lute and he is holding still in the middle of the night he stops his play to listen and as you zoom in onto his face you see that he has his eyes closed. He's listening very intently but the thing is he doesn't need to open his eyes because he is blind. And it's extraordinary how to see how the lacquerer has managed to express that fact in sprinkled gold powder on lacquer. And when you open the box you see the round disc of the moon in silver now a bit tarnished and underneath the grasses because that is what he's listening to, the rustling of the grasses in the wind. And when you zoom in on the grasses you see that they are damp and flattened by the wind and so it's Again, it's not only autumn, it's not only this specific night, but it's a very specific moment in nature. This, this moment of listening and the wet grasses, the smell, everything, as if you are there. The act of opening of the box is very much part of the artwork and that's characteristic of Japanese art. Time, as it were, is built into the artwork and the surprise and the enjoyment of opening up and 
knowing the story and knowing what's going to be inside, guessing is part of the fun. Because the onlooker, the user of this object, may well have guessed what the inside would look like seeing the man sitting there with his loot. Because it's the legendary prince Semimaru who was banned from the capital, Kyoto, and had to spend his days far away in the mountains with only his loot to keep him company at night. And in fact, we are pretty sure that the um, user of this object was educated because he was no less than the Emperor of Japan who received this box in 1909. And when he passed away three years later, he left the box to his lady-in-waiting. And we can imagine how incredibly meaningful it was for her with this particular theme. And on the wooden storage box is the title of the object and it's called The Sound of Things. <laughs> 